Well, it's a real pleasure to be here in this oxymoron moment. Old friends meeting for the first time. Yeah. You made a well promise. Said. Well said. That implied our friendship. Yeah. And it is yet like the first time we're meeting. So I've got a couple of questions that get a little bit deeper as they go along. And I thought I'd lay the foundation first up with some obvious questions and then come to the deeper one. The foundation of what is my inner being? The second one, what does my inner being think about my wealth, my desires? And the third one, my strong desires, do they actually think? Does it have a consciousness? And can I converse with it? Navigate around some of those tricky sticking points that I would have. We like the nature of your questions. Your inner being is the consciousness that was you before you know yourself as who you now are. But it's not just the consciousness that was you. It is the larger part of the consciousness that is you. So your inner being is you, but sometimes your inner being is not recognized by you because as humans, your personality leans toward unwanted and toward fixing problems where your inner being is always solution oriented, always. So if you can grasp the concept that your inner being is you, but it's the non-resisted version of you, it's like when Esther's Jerry made his transition into non-physical. It took her a little while to accept him in his completely non-resisted form. She didn't find him to be resistant in nature when he was in his physical body. And yet she knows that he was because he was in his physical body. And so it took some orientation to begin looking for him where he is rather than looking for him as he was. And in a very strict sense, that's what we're asking of you. We're asking you to see yourself as you really are, not as this physical life experience has led you to believe that you are. You might have come to believe that you are vulnerable while your inner being never sees you that way and so forth. You might have come to believe yourself not as worthy while your inner being never sees you that way. So that's who your inner being is. Consciousness, knowing. Now, consciousness to humans seems like words and consciousness can be translated by you as Esther is doing now into words. So when you are really in sync with your inner being and you are receiving those impulses, those impulses feel so natural to you as you receive them that you don't realize you're getting them from your inner being. So you keep asking the question, who is my inner being when much of the time you are being your inner being? You are merged with your inner being. You get what we're talking about? So that's our quest. That's what we desire. We desire that you come to realize that much of the time, and we're speaking specifically to you, much of the time you're in concert with your inner being. So much so that you cannot separate your thoughts from the thoughts of your inner being because you are receiving the vibrational version of them and translating them through your mechanism into physical word equivalent. So that's why you keep not knowing who your inner being is because your inner being is you and it's hard for you to accept that. It's hard to accept that. Most humans want that to be outside of them. We don't want you to think it's outside of you. It is not outside of you. It is you. Is this helping? Yes. So now, what was the last part of your question? It stepped up to, therefore, what does my inner being think about my wealth? Now, this is the part that you will understand. We know you will. So we're just going to set it out here straight up for you. So consciousness is consciousness. And whether you call it vibration or energy or thought, it doesn't matter. It's vibration or energy that you translate into thought or word, but it is all still consciousness. And thoughts are consciousness, and ideas are consciousness, and desires are consciousness too. And we don't want to make this feel complicated because it is not. But when you think a thought, that thought does think. 
And therefore, what a clever question you've asked us because your desire is consciousness too. But let's really make you understand what your desire being consciousness really means because when you have been launching these rockets of desires all of this life and before and your inner being has become the vibrational equivalent of all of those because your inner being is a cooperative component to your desires so trying to make a distinction or separation between your inner being and your desires is foolish because your inner being is the non embodiment, <laughs> the non physical energy version, the knower, the already beer of all of those desires. So if you can think of your inner being as the present tense vibrational version of all that you have become, and that's what your desires are, it's all that you have become vibrationally, then maybe. You can relax a little bit and not try so hard and not do what most people do and think yourself out of connection. You can be the step three part of the equation. Esther sat to meditate before coming here a few times this morning. And the last thing she wrote on her segment of intending is, I am step three and I am good at it. I'm step three. These lovelies will be the step ones. They will ask the questions. Abraham knows everything about all of it. Abraham, your inner being, splitting hairs to try to make any distinction between those two. Non-physical energy knowing you, knowing you. And so Esther's translating. She's step three, and that's what we're asking you to do. Spend more of your time consciously, deliberately allowing, which means don't try so hard to be the answerer of the questions. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Humans want to be the answerer of the question because you want to be the one who figures it out. Well, let yourself be the one who figures it out, but let that non-physical part of you be you and stop being in competition with your own inner being. Stop being in competition with your own inner being. Oh no, inner being, I've got this. I'll figure this out. You just stand by and feed me clues. Because I will come and save the day. You're, it's all sorted out. It's all sorted out. What you're wanting to do is to get yourself in a steady, receptive mode. So that when impulses come to you and you feel the power of the impulse, that no one can talk you out of your impulse. No one can talk me out of my impulse. So quite often I have found myself where... The inspired action seems what irrational in the moment. Yes. Which yes. led me to the next question is... It's a high-flying idea. Source is all over it, and all things are possible. So Source knows what to do and knows what the path of least resistance is and gives you an impulse. Don't talk to other humans. Yes. Yeah. How do I keep my head while all those around me are losing theirs type thing? Yeah. Shy away. By knowing who you're dealing with, and by practicing it and by watching outcomes and by acknowledging the correlation between when a strong, clear knowing comes to you and you follow through with it and what comes next is pleasing or helpful. We would like to just zap you all. And we mean that sort of like slap you upside the head. <laughs> We'd like to zap you all with an understanding of who you are to us and how we feel about you and we would like to help you to diminish the separation that you keep establishing in your vying for credit or marks on the chart or accolades from other humans when you just want to live happily ever after you want to follow your path of least resistance if we could zap you with anything it would be in this moment utter knowing of how blessed and deserving you are that's what we would like to imbue you with but most of you have practiced otherwise for a while. And so our words don't feel to you like something that you can quite let in. But when there's strong desire, when there's really, really strong desire, you're more likely to let that knowing in. Thank you.